All right, welcome back to flipped video number two for multiplication. Um, today I'm going to show you a completely different strategy. We've already talked about groups of, and we've discussed kind of how to manipulate our numbers once we see a problem like two times three to figure out what the product of that is. Now I'm going to show you another way to go about finding the product of a number, and we're going to use number lines this time. Okay, so with our number lines, we're going to do some multiplication, and we're going to use this tool that's going to help us get there. So before we used a picture, here we're going to kind of use the tool that's a number line. Um, now, on your paper, if you would draw a number line, you only really need the one that is from 0 to 20, and that would be enough for right now. Um, as we get going, we can look at a more extensive way to do it. Um, but for right now, I just want you to start with 0 through 20. So I'm going to move mine down. just a little bit so it's easier to see. Okay, so what we're gonna do is if I have the problem three times six, and I wanna know what does that equal, okay? So this is my problem. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have three groups or three jumps of six. So I'm gonna start here at zero because every time we start on a number line, we're always gonna start at zero, okay? So I'm gonna make one jump of six. I'm gonna make one jump of six more, so that means I'm gonna have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, so to 12. So I'm gonna jump again. That's six more. And then I have to do one more jump, right, because I have three. So let's count again. If I have one, two, three, four, five, six, I gotta go to the 18. So I'm gonna make my third jump of six. Now what number did I end on here? If you said 18, you're correct. So do you know what three times six really is? If I multiply three and six, I get the number 18. So this is another way or another strategy you can use to go about making your multiplication problems easier for yourself. Okay, now this time, let's go to a clean number line that we haven't used yet. And I want you to, let's see here. Um, I want us to do the problem five if my pen will work. Five times seven. And I want to know what that equals. Okay, so I'm going to do five times seven and figure out what does that equal. So what can I do? I'm going to do what kinds of jumps. Go ahead and try it really quickly and see what you get. Pause the video and try it. Okay, hopefully what you decided to do was that we see that we have a five here. Let me get the Okay, so I have a five, so I'm gonna do five jumps of seven, okay? Five jumps of seven. So with my pen, and I'm gonna change colors here so that it's easier to see, okay? I'm gonna do five jumps of seven. So where do I always have to start? Very good, at the zero. So I'm gonna do one jump of seven. If I go seven more, that's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna go to my 14. I've got to do seven more because that's only two jumps, right? I can even number them. So I have one jump, two jumps, okay? Then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven because see my 20s are repeated. So I'm going to go to 21. Okay, 21, and that's my third jump. Okay, that one's kind of funky. Then I'm going to go 21. I've got to go... Seven more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm going to 28. And that's my fourth. So how many more jumps do I have to do? Should be one, good. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna end at 35. And that's my fifth. Now, let's see if I know that I end at 35, I'm gonna circle that number. I'm gonna erase what I've done and let's try it with seven jumps of five. And let's see if we get the same thing because we've talked a little bit about having the commutative property. Let's see if it applies here as well. So I'm gonna do seven jumps of five. So I'm gonna go five, and this is a little bit easier. 10, that's one, two, 15, three, 20, four, 25, five, 30, six, 35. Now, did I wind up at the same place? 
I did. So that's proving that our multiplication is commutative. I can have seven groups of five or I can have five groups of seven and it will wind up being the same. Okay, I want you to do one more problem for me on that last little set of number lines. Now, I want you to try this on your own and we're gonna discuss it in class. So practice this. Your problem is nine times seven equals what? And I wanna know what's gonna go in that spot, okay? Now, some of you may be saying, I really don't prefer the number line method, and that's okay. The whole point of this is that I'm giving you different strategies because what might be your favorite might not be a favorite to somebody else. So we're gonna have a whole tool bag of things that we can use to help us as we're going through our multiplication, okay? So now you have groups of in your tool bag, and you have number lines, okay? So we're adding those things into our tool bag and we'll be more functional and more able to work through multiplication problems as they become more difficult. All right, and always, I'm not going to leave you without giving you a riddle to stretch your brain. I wanna know the answer to this riddle, okay? One night, a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker go to a hotel. When they get their bill, however, it's for four people. Who is the fourth person? Hmm, I'm curious. I look forward to discussing this with you and to working through some more problems using our number lines. Thanks for tuning in.